Breathstroke, Backstroke, Butterfly, Freestyle. Those are the names of my four children. But they also happen to be the names of the four main swimming strokes. But what if I were to tell you that there was a secret fifth swimming stroke that you've never even heard of? You'd probably say something like, yeah, that's what the title said. Well, guess what? There is a secret fifth swimming stroke that you've never even heard of. It's called the side stroke. And this isn't one of those things that like technically exists, but is actually dumb and obscure and useless and just useful for making clickbaity titles. We'd never make a video about something like that. Side stroke is a real thing. It looks like this, and it's actually used widely to rescue people. Casual swimmers use it, lifeguards use it, even the Navy uses it. They have their own version called the combat side stroke. So why is a seemingly awkward and inefficient swim technique so good at keeping people afloat? In the wise words of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., side stroke gives swimmers the best of both worlds. In this case, the best of freestyle and breaststroke. People have swam freestyle for as long as civilization has existed, with the Roman, Greeks, Assyrians, and countless indigenous tribes adapting some form of it. Swimming freestyle allows people to keep their heads in the water for as long as they need to without, you know, drowning, because it uses this overhand stroke, which also makes it the fastest swim stroke out there. Even so, a good number of Europeans resisted learning how to freestyle until the 1900s because nothing pones indigenous people harder than swimming inefficiently. Most Europeans who knew how to swim swam breaststroke since it was considered classier to keep your face out of the water to discuss the debutante ball's latest ankle flashing. And breaststroke isn't without its merits. It uses less energy and force to propel swimmers through the water because it uses this underwater pull and kick that allows swimmers to glide for longer stretches of time. In fact, it's still the most common swim stroke used by Europeans. But one technique everyone could agree on was side stroke. While well, it wasn't as fast as freestyle or as conducive to gossiping as breaststroke, it combined alternating overhand strokes and kicks performed on a person's side, which allowed swimmers to keep their heads out of the water as much as they wanted. While laying on one side, a swimmer bends their knees and brings their hands together, kind of like hatching an evil plot while in the fetal position. Then they kick their legs away from each other and straighten out their arms. At last, with their arms straight and legs out, the swimmer then pulls their legs back together to glide. Easy peasy, right? But alas, all those Europeans who stuck with side stroke couldn't keep up with the freestylers in competition, and the one thing racists hate more than being proven wrong is being publicly humiliated, so they quickly adopted freestyle to keep up with everyone else. But side stroke did increase in popularity as more people got into swimming. But not by those people. When leisurely swimming trickled down from the wealthiest people to the masses throughout the 20th century, so too did drownings, and thus, capitalism invented a new job, undrownifiers, sometimes called lifeguards. Turns out, side stroke was an intuitive technique for them because it helped lifeguards save people without going under themselves, a useful tool given that a key part of saving people from drowning is not drowning. The keys were in the stroke's alignment and cadence. It keeps the human body's most buoyant organs afloat at a slow pace that maximizes gliding so people don't get winded super quickly. When you're laying on your side, your head, chest, and hips all stay at the surface line, aligning your natural buoyancy with the water line, which allows your body to conserve energy by not having to work as hard to keep you afloat, and you don't have to turn your head side to side to breathe, which is pretty important for lifeguards who are rescuing a panicked beachgoer who's thrashing around and screaming some annoying stuff about how they're dying until they're hauled into shore. And while you've probably never heard of this swim stroke before, every Navy SEAL has. All Navy SEALs, SWCCs, EOD technicians, and divers must master underwater recovery strokes during their grueling training periods, and the combat side stroke is an intuitive technique that can be mastered pretty quickly, or at least by the end of their 26-week training. Soldiers can learn breath stroke, but because it's a forward-facing technique, it means you have to pop your head out of the water every couple strokes, which is a pretty good way to tell an enemy, hey, look at my head, sure it'd be easy to shoot me in it every few seconds. So guess which underwater recovery stroke they've adapted? I'll give you a hint, it's the one I've been talking about for the past four minutes. That's right, the side stroke, except technically the Navy has their own version known as combat side stroke because they love being special. Combat side stroke differs from when you straighten out underwater. You get a longer pull that allows you to glide underwater for longer, which results in fewer strokes than traditional side stroke laps. The combat side stroke is great because it effectively hides soldiers without exerting them, even less than regular side stroke because you're not losing as much energy on the first pull. When you pull your arms together, your bottom hand is used as a scooper, kind of like in breaststroke, which allows you to gain more distance on the glide. And honestly, it's perfect for special ops swimmers who need to not get killed while swimming through enemy territory, which means they have to swim efficiently without revealing their location through splashy kicks or mouth breathing. But despite its use by lifeguards in the Navy, side stroke fell out of favor when it was replaced by the crawl in competition in the early 1900s, and it's not widely taught today. So the next time you spot someone doing it at your local pool, why not stop and give them a hearty round of applause for keeping tradition alive? Just don't applaud for too long because it turns out that's actually a really weird thing to do.
And if you're ready to move on from the mechanics of swim strokes, but aren't ready to move on from learning more about the world around you, have I got just the thing for you. With hardcore topics like chemistry, biology, algebra, or computer science, it can be hard to learn from lectures or watching someone else complete problems, which just so happens to be the basis of most educational systems. But our sponsor, Brilliant, is different. By breaking down these complex topics into bite-sized lessons that emphasize learning by doing, you can dive deep into topics that you've never explored before, or brush off on subjects you haven't touched since high school. There are dozens of super high-quality courses to choose from depending on how much Type 2 you want to have, including Calculus in a Nutshell, which I really enjoy because now I actually understand derivatives and integrals instead of just telling all my friends I do. The best part is, you can get started for free today by clicking the button on screen or heading to brilliant.org slash HAI. The first 200 of you will get 20% off a premium subscription too. So what are you waiting for? Upgrade your brain and check out Brilliant today.